del siglo XX aparecieron mascotas y logos comerciales por los que parece que no pasa el tiempo. La exposición Pictoplasma White Noise nos acerca el diseño de mascotas en todas sus manifestaciones posibles. This is like a group show, Pictoplasma uh, White Noise. And so it's, it's like a, coming out from a project we do for 15 years now. And it's all about character design. So the idea of very minimal, reduced, simple, figurative entities that mainly function in a communication process. They look at us, they don't are embedded in a narration, but are more like signifiers who communicate, like a logo. Basically, all, all these characters or all the, the art and the work that you see here is um, always building upon a strong mascot and a strong emphasis on having appeal, trying to communicate, but um, they do not communicate any product anymore. All of these characters are really referring to themselves as an entity, as a life form. The main thing really is that um, as soon as you create something that is really, really reduced, but it has some kind of anthropomorphic appeal, it looks at you, you can emotionalize it. And you cannot emotionalize the word Nike or the word Mac McDonald's. It's, it's very difficult to emotionalize that. You need something that pushes it a little bit further so that you can really feel empathy for it or that you know what the, what the underlying topic might be. But at the same time, you have to reduce the character so that it doesn't tell too much, so that it doesn't um, distract you, so, so that you yourself can put in the narration that you want to, so that you, it, it's open and it appeals to many people, because the viewer is uh, in the active process of projecting emotion into it. Like if you look at the Michelin Man, I mean, he's, it's very old, like what, maybe the oldest um, ongoing mascot, But somehow it's very, very annoying. It's very, penetra very, very penetrating. It looks quite silly today. Or if you take Ronald McDonald, he's like, like almost like an evil clown. He's not like a, you know, he's like, he looks like a seducer to the kids giving them hamburgers. So something, you, they invent something, they just think in the 60s, great, we have a clown, everybody loves him, he's happy. But 50 years later, he's like the anti-mascot for the own product. So it's a little bit risky. And then if you don't have the mascot, but just the Nike swoosh, maybe that's even the more, Better resistant, to control, yeah. more resistant even, because it's just, what is it? It's like, it's dynamic, it's maybe a smile, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a positive sign, that's all. For us, um, animation can also happen with a still image. If the still image is strong and, and um, triggers your fantasy, then you in your head animate what you see. And the bigger problem is that um, um, most animation that we all know, um, well, they have to produce it somehow, and then they all go into the wrong direction of just using pre-formula narrations. And then they kill basically the potential of the characters. Basically, it is, um, there is no more cultural difference. There is just a huge amount of too many images. And that's also a little bit why this exhibition is called White Noise. It's just too much images, it's too much information, it's too loud. And it's all at the same time, and it's very hard to focus on one image and to really understand one image, where it comes from, what it means. Does it mean anything? Does it want to tell me something? It's just too much information. And by doing these open calls and getting people involved to think about adding their own images, They're not only just consuming this white noise, but maybe they can therapy 
themselves and, and understand what is a mask and why am I attracted to all of these images? How can I make my own? How can I be creative with it? How can I understand what the possibilities of these images is, but also what the problem of these images is and stuff like that. <laughs>